So much of our lives is spent in a longing and a search for what we do not know. So many of our ostensible goals, so many of the things we think we want, turn out to be the masks behind which our real desires hide. They are symbols for the actual values and qualities for which we hunger. They are not reducible to physical or material things, not even to a physical person. They are psychological qualities, love, truth, honesty, loyalty, purpose. Something we can feel is noble, precious, and worthy of our devotion. We try to reduce all of this to something physical, a house, a car, a better job, or a human being, but it doesn't work. Without realizing it, we are searching for the sacred, and the sacred is not reducible to anything else. Sacredness is, in a sense, a feeling, but a feeling that goes to the very heart of life. It is the feeling of recognition directed toward what is great and high enough to give our small lives meaning, to put our personal journeys in a greater perspective. It is the feeling of reverence. What we call the sacred is ultimately a universe of meaning against which we measure our personal efforts, our personal lives, to see whether they too have meaning. <clears throat> For the male psyche, the discovery of the sacred, the communion with the sacred, is always through the inner feminine. It is white bison woman who brings the sacredness in life, the vision of the sky and the 12 moons. She says, with visible breath, I am walking. A voice I am sending as I walk. In a sacred manner, I am walking. With visible tracks, I am walking. In a sacred manner, I walk. Like a river of being in which all the streams of inner life run together, all the values that we feel instinctively as sacred converge in the image of anima and are made conscious in us through her. She is, as Jung said, the matrix of all the divine and semi-divine figures from the pagan goddess to the virgin, from the messenger of the Holy Grail to the saint. We seem never to go searching directly or consciously for the sacred side of life. Like the two scouts, we wander in our old hunting grounds, seeking only the habitual and the known. Suddenly, we are confronted with an unknown part of ourselves. She comes walking a long way off, arrayed in a white buckskin. And when she speaks, it is a voice like singing. At first, we are confused. She bears the image of a woman, and we want to believe that, she, that we can relate to her as a woman. It is hard to believe that she is not physical woman, but a metaphysical force so powerful that we dare not try to touch her physically. This is the fact that the sacred presents to us. This is how the sacred becomes one and speaks to us with a single voice. This is anima. Otherwise, we would feel the sacred only vaguely as the other side of life, the other side of myself, that we have never touched, never known. It manifests as dreams of adventures that we long for, triumphs we can almost taste, luminous men and women we meet walking in the corridors and fabled kingdoms of our minds. Without reasoning, without thinking, our feelings pull us toward the other side of ourselves where every image vibrates with the promise of an extraordinary meaning, experience, or sense of wholeness. 
All this converges and focuses in one inner being. White bison woman comes to the two scouts as stranger from a larger world outside the ego's vision, the ego's opinions or notions of reality. Her reality is so much larger, so filled with potential for enlarging our lives and for giving them meaning that the unconscious says to us, this is sacred. This is what you must treat as sacred. White bison woman sings, with visible breath, I am walking, a voice I am sending as I walk. Breath is the age-old symbol of life and spirit. For ancient people, breath was the very substance of God, breathed into our nostrils by our Creator, a spark of the divine energy lent to our mortal flesh for a hand's breadth of time on this earth, the breath of life. As white bison woman walks with visible breath, she makes what we call the spiritual side of life visible, manifest. She makes the invisible visible.